Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Reed of Neo Metals. How are you today, Chris? Uh, I'm very well, Tracy. Uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying the move to summer. Well, of course, Chris, you've had a lot of news lately and you've had you know, a terrific update for your shareholders. And you recently announced an MOU with Mineral Res Resources to further progress the development of a downstream lithium chemical plant that would produce battery quality lithium hydroxide product suitable for direct sales to the lithium ion battery industry. Okay, I wanted to make sure I got that right. Can you please provide Investor Intel audience with an update on this MOU, please? Uh, absolutely, Tracy. Uh, look, part of the transaction with Ganfeng uh, last year was that uh, they were obligated to purchase the first three years production from the Mount Marion mine. Um, after the third production year, Mineral Resources and Neometals had the option then to buy back 51% of the offtake so that we could have a feed for our own downstream uh, processing ambitions. Um, you know, we've long wanted to become an integrated, integrated producer uh, of lithium. Um, the first step was to get the mine up and running as a concentrate producer, um, and then in a couple of years' time, because it actually takes that long to, once you've completed the construction of the concentrate operation, it takes you a number of years to permit and build uh, a lithium downstreaming plant. So it, it is really just an affirmation now that the mine is moving into commercial production, uh, that we are now in the final stages uh, of the evaluation of downstream production of lithium hydroxide, and it's a commitment for both of us to advance that with a view that we can, uh, we can make a, a final investment decision uh, in early Q3 of financial year, uh, sorry, calendar year 2017. Well, I, I think you've, you've kind of answered this question, but I want to step you sideways for just a second. Christopher Ecclestone was describing this as a, as a superb deal and that sharehold, shareholders may not truly appreciate uh, the nuances of this deal. I think what he was trying to say is, number one, you have proven uh, your extraction technology process works. And uh, perhaps you'd like to comment a little further about what Christopher was saying in his analysis on this deal. Uh, I think Chris uh, is one of the, the, certainly one of the few analysts uh, that gets our, our overarching strategy, and that's one, to get the mine up and running, de-risk that, uh, at the same time develop the flow sheet for downstream processing. Um, the deal with Ganfeng, and, and I think one of the misunderstood barriers to entry into the lithium market is actually having uh, a large customer to sell your product to. If you want to start up a, a good-sized mine, you need to move a lot of concentrate, ergo you need a, a large partner. And Ganfeng uh, are the largest, most diverse lithium producer in China, certainly the fastest growing, uh, multi-billion dollar US uh, market cap, uh, and the ability, uh, over, the, over certainly over the last year that we've been dealing with them, uh, to raise large amounts of equity. Uh, they're actually moving beyond lithium conversion into cathode production and batteries. Um, and as you get further down the chain, the lithium value in that end product becomes less. So they become a stronger partner. Um, we're able to get the mine up. Uh, they take a lot of production. Uh, and then after three uh, full years of production, we're then able to uh, take some of the feed and, and put it into our own downstreaming plant. So we're doing it in two stages rather than, rather than having a, a half a billion dollar roll of the dice to start off with. Um, we've done a deal with Australia's largest processor of minerals uh, where we've developed the world's, I mean, in, within 12 months we've constructed the world's biggest hard rock lithium concentrator. Uh, it's twice as big as the plant down at Greenbushes uh, that's owned by Tianji and, and Albemarle. Um, we've done that with no dilution, no need to raise capital uh, and no need to contribute capital. Um, and now we're more concentrated on where we want to be. I think if you have a look at the, should we say, the normalised pricing for lithium concentrates and lithium chemicals, um, that the chemical production is normally about twice as financially attractive as producing the concentrates. Um, so we are constant, now... We have a very strong balance sheet through selling down some equity in the mine uh, and we're able to finance our share of a downstreaming plant should we make that final investment decision next year. 
Okay, you always leave me with more questions that I want to ask than we have time for. But so one of the reasons we have you speaking at the uh, Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit is because of your understanding of the lithium market. And there's a lot of debate right now about whether or not there is a shortage of lithium. Clearly, I think your, your stats, you'll be uh, supplying 18% of the global supply of lithium in the future. Is that correct? Did I read that right? Yeah, um, Marion uh, will contribute... Uh, once the Fine Circuits Commission in the first quarter of calendar next year will contribute about 50,000 tonnes of LCE as lithium concentrates into the Chinese market. Now, that will take the Chinese from uh, from a, a utilisation rate of just over 60 uh, up into the 90s. Uh, so it is the most significant addition of lithium uh, units into the market, uh, I would suggest, probably since the last expansion at Greenbushes, so a number of years ago. Um, I think if you have a look at, we get back to just basic mineral economics. Um, the lithium carbonate and hydroxide prices for 2017 from the Western producers, so the brine producers, looks to uh, going off global lithium, looking to be well into the double digits in terms of thousands of dollars per tonne. Uh, and then a couple of thousand dollar premium for lithium hydroxide on top of that. So I, I would just go back and say, well, you know, if demand is higher than supply, the prices will jump up. Certainly the prices have uh, continued to, to rise. Yes, the spot market or the small volume market in China has come back a little bit, but you would, you would expect that they would converge over time. Uh, I think... Pricing and, and history would show, say at the moment that there is a shortage. Now, what it will be this time next year uh, with our production coming in, it would be less than a shortage, uh, perhaps approaching balance. Um, I think what we've consistently undershot as an industry is the demand growth uh, for lithium. Uh, certainly the Chinese with their EV forecasts is a real shot in the arm. Um, probably not tr uh, not purely economic uh, versus the internal combustion engine at the moment, but rapidly approaching it. Um, whereas renewable energy storage is now past grid parity um, in terms of solar plus storage uh, in quite a number of jurisdictions, the US, uh, Australia, Great Britain, Germany. So, I mean, that's economic now and they are larger format batteries than the car. So. The underlying thematics are the batteries, uh, there's more and more batteries and the batteries are getting bigger um, and we have consistently undershot demand. You know, it is for the batteries, the lithium going into the cathodes, it's, it's well into the double digit growth. Well, I can't tell you how delighted I am with your analysis of the market. Uh, I could not agree with you more, Chris. And speaking of, uh, of following you, Chris, and respect in the industry for understanding the global supply of lithium, I mean, I've watched you take Neo Metals since uh, Christopher Ecclestone first told me to take a look at Neo Metals. From you know being a, a small cap or really small cap player, you're you're over 200 million plus market cap now. You got 66 million Australian in the bank, and you've given your shareholders dividends twice now, which is just unheard of for a company in your market cap range. Can you tell us what we as shareholders should anticipate, say the next couple of quarters? Other than uh, I can't wait to see what you're going to announce next. <laughs> Yeah, it's certainly a question that uh, that we get asked uh, reasonably reasonably often by shareholders. Um, look, we're going into the commissioning phase of the mine with uh, a significant amount of cash on the balance sheet. Once the mine reaches steady state production uh, in the first quarter uh, of of next calendar year, um, obviously we can then look uh, at how we're going to deploy that. Uh, one of our main focuses is obviously for the downstream lithium plant. Um, we are cognizant that we have started uh, returning some money to the shareholders. It is our ambition that we would we would maintain that. Um, the size and timing of quantum obviously still to be decided by the board. Um, but with dividends, you know, it's uh, when you start a dividend policy uh, and paying dividends, it's not something you would start if you thought you had to stop it quickly. 
certainly the cash flows coming from uh, Mount Marin will enable us to sustain uh, a return of something to the shareholders. Uh, on top of the significant amount of cash, we have been able to monetize our, our nickel assets. Uh, we've uh, exchanged those for about 13 or 14 million Australian dollars worth of stock in another uh, listed Australian company. Uh, so I think our concept there is uh, we create the value, uh, we share with partners to make it real, uh, and then we share with our shareholders. Uh, I think the, the true mark of a company is that you can return more capital uh, than you invest. Certainly, if I was asking you to invest in a, a business, uh, Tracy, you would be wanting to uh, me to return more than I took off you to start off with. That is correct. Well, Chris, as usual, it's a pleasure getting an update on Neo Metals, and we can't wait to see you in Toronto for the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Good night.